so I'd like to go straight in, into the presentation by Professor Alice Lee of Hong Kong University and her colleague, Ms. Phoebe Wu. They're going to speak about students as producers and leaders in legal education, students working to co-produce education videos in the LEAD project. Hello everyone, this is Alice Lee and Phoebe Wu, a student and a teacher from the Faculty of Law of the University of Hong Kong. Today we are going to share some exciting initiatives done by teacher and students together. We actually have three examples. They are the first one, legal education aligned with diversity, or in short, we call it LEAD. The second one is an optional exploration, which is a learning and assessment activity for undergraduate students. The third one is a website, we call it Collab, that we co-launched together. Maybe we'll start with the first one, LEAD. Sure. LEAD is a student-teacher partnership initiative founded by my classmates in law school, Alice and I, back then in 2007. What brought us together is our passion in nurturing and promoting a student-led learning, uh, learning environment. So we believe that students are more capable, that they can contribute more to teaching and learning than just sitting in lecture halls, typing like transcribers. So our greatest achievement was that we produced a series of videos illustrating landlord principles. Yes, we sat together, came up with scripts, produced videos and uploaded them onto YouTube. And I can assure you that the process was much more beneficial than we thought. So when we designed the plot, we sat together and thought about how landlord principles like the doctrine of hopiety estoppel and constructive trust can be applied to our everyday life. And more challenging is that we need to consider how we can illustrate these principles in an easily understood way. And finally, we acquired new technical skills like how to shoot videos and even edit them. So the entire process was very fruitful. And we are very pleased to know that our videos had received a, a very much well received among our students and fellow classmates. So let's show you the bit of our video. Let's go. Whoa, what a nice place. But I need somewhere to sleep tonight. Let me back that. Well, look at this shabby guy. He must be needing some money. Hey, do you want to sell this flat? How much can you pay for deposit? Wealthy people never wait. And I'm a wealthy person. So I'm going to pay in full. Okay, deal. Deal. I'm going to buy some very nice necklace for my baby. See you. Money, money, money. My apartment. Hey, I'm here. Who are you? I'm the rich guy. Which guy? I don't know you. I bought this flat from you. Bought this flat? I'm not selling my flat. Go away. What? What? In this case, there is only an oral agreement. According to Section 31 of the Compensating Property Ordinance, CPO, this agreement is unenforceable. Therefore, the seller can refuse the buyer to enter the flat afterwards. Now, let's compare this with the following scenario. Okay, deal. Deal. Here is your key. This is your better. Wonderful. The equitable doctrine of part performance is expressly preserved by Section 3.2 of CPO. Arguably, handing over the key may amount to part performance. But it is always better to have So, as we can see, actually, student generated videos are much more engaging and relatable than teacher generated content. Just look at the view counts more than 2,300 views. I don't think I can ever achieve that on my own. So, it was really a fruitful and mutually beneficial learning experience. And therefore, we decided to actually launch that officially for the Land Law course at the University of Hong Kong. And we called this optional exploration. It is indeed optional in that students they can decide whether to take part in it. And if they do, they will form their own teams, choose their own topics, and choose their own timing and also format of presentation. So this is a really exciting activity for them to show their understanding, their way to engage their peers, and also to show their creativity. 
And we also ask students to upload their work onto our intranet, that is a Moodle pe platform, on a weekly basis. As you can see, students, they will form their own teams, they will acknowledge each other's efforts and contributions, and they will share their knowledge in an engaging way. So this is actually more effective and efficient than just sitting there and taking notes. So we find that actually there is much more to learn from this activity and we decided to do a student-led survey. So this actually is a survey designed and also conducted by lead team. And we actually have designed some questions and also focus group meetings to find out whether students they find this a fruitful experience. And it's really encouraging to see that you can see over 97% of students, they find that this is a very useful and helpful activity. And also more excitingly is that students after taking this activity, they also decided to form their own reaching teams to share their knowledge with the wider community. So we see that this is actually a very fruitful experience. We wanted to share it with more people, more students and teachers. And so that's why we co-launch mm -hmm. our website, which we call Collab. Or uh, maybe Phoebe, you can walk us through this website. Yes, sure. Let me show you the reflections by lead members and also students who participated in the optional exploration activity. Welcome to Collab, our website. So here we've got photos showing, oh, this is lead members doing a sharing during a lecture. And then here we've got reflections by lead members. So for information, Hong Kong U is offering four different law degree programs. And here lead members are from these programs. We've got Eno, who is from the government and law program. So he said that collaborating closely with his teammates, he improved his team play and communication skills. And then here we've got Matthew from the business and law program. Matthew found it rewarding when applying the marketing and presentation skills acquired in other business courses in the video making process. So as you can see, in the study of LLB program, this is Steve. LLB curriculum. In me, I'm from the arts and law program. So to showcase my creativity, I compose a poem. So I'll be happy to share with you. Showing how learning can be fun is our goal. Together, we create and share our knowledge. Student-teacher partnership in education is our idea. Together, we will inspire more, join us, and get on board. Thank you very much, Phoebe. We also invited current students who joined the optional exploration activity to share with us and with the wider audience their reflections and their experience. For example, this one is actually a team of students doing sharing with a homemade video. And then the next one is a team of BBA Law students who actually showcase their technology skills. This is something they have learned during the process called Chroma Key, which is a very high tech thing for me. And then the next one, you can see a team of students, they are imitating cartoon characters and composing their own songs. So these are all very fruitful and influential experiences that we would like to share with everyone. So as you can see, we are making much more progress. We've got a lot more tabs. And then for the study of land law, we've got this experiential learning activity. So during Christmas last year, which was before the coronavirus, we visited an adversely possessed property in the new territories. So we visited a solicitor's firm, and then we learned how to read geo maps, area photos, and survey sheets. So as you can see here, this is the site that we went on. And then we also learned more about So this is a self are looking for activities outside the more learning and teaching activities and initiatives. So we have more to go and more to share. Please come to our website, have a look when you have time and feel free to share this with your friends and your colleagues. Thank you all very much. And this is our sharing. So thank you, uh, Professor Lee and uh, 
and BB, and, and um, now we can pause for breath. It's been quite rushed to keep to the timetable. Has anybody got any questions uh, uh, either about Professor the Hong Kong U project or the student as producer project? Alice, if I may, can I ask? Um, so, have you got plans for how to develop this further? Absolutely. Um, that's why we had done the survey, because we actually specifically asked students whether they thought that this could be um, transplanted to other courses. And so, they actually suggested that some courses, especially courses based on case studies, for example, tort law, contract law. So, we believe other courses could also benefit from this initiative. And then uh, there's a question in the chat box. Uh, Darcy Davidson Robinson Roberts would like to know um, how were the students able to develop the technical skills to carry out these activities? Um, perhaps I can answer this question on behalf of the team. So actually there are some of us who have basic level of technical skills of how we can video edit. Um, some of us uh, self-learn these skills like we watch YouTube videos and they're actually quite easy to learn. I mean, we can pick up very easy, like for myself, because of the project, I learned how to add subtitles to videos, to cut videos. It's actually much more easy than imagined. So, yeah. There's a kind of a, a follow-up question. So one, one question is the technical skills, and the other is about the law, you know, feeling confident about the legal side of things. How did, how did that partnership work? then I have to handle this question because um, actually um, two weeks before each uh, group presentation, I will be doing a briefing on the relevant topic. So for example, in two weeks time, I know that the team will be presenting on adverse possession, that I will give them a very, very brief, maybe 20 minute briefing on what adverse possession is. And of course they have to do their own reading, research, and maybe find an interesting case to present on. So I do give them a bit of um, guidance, so to speak, uh, before they actually um, um, go go on to do their own research. So this is, the, um, but they basically take the, the lead, I mean, in the sense that they do their own research, everything by themselves. And for the technology thing, I think maybe they just need the incentive. I'm sure that they are fast learners. I mean, all the students, they can just pick up anything in a very short time. So if we, because for this activity, actually I did not add that in the video, it's that it is a 30% um, contribution to their final grade. So therefore that would be the incentive and they will be able to self-learn all the technology, I guess. But, you know, you've got that very attractive looking website there. Um, what, what, uh, did the faculty or the university provide IT support for that, for that kind of thing? Well, actually that is uh, Phoebe and I, and also uh, as lead members, we uh, designed the website. Um, so initially it is just a Google site. Uh, but then we showed this to our faculty and then the faculty is also very pleased with what we have done. And so now it is endorsed by the faculty and it is also viewable on our faculty website. So actually it started grassroots, but then it was uh, endorsed by the um, uh, institution. We are very pleased to see that. Thank you. And then uh, Summit asks, what are the limitations and challenges of this project? Limitations and challenges. And then uh, the second part of the question, could it be extended to any kind of law, such as the basic law, studying the basic law? Well, maybe to take the last question first, basic law, absolutely. I think yeah. any area of law, so long as students, they can form their own teams, do their own research and present their work in a creative way, because that is our emphasis. No specified format. So they can do a musical, they can do a video, they can do a live drama, they can do a recorded interview. So the format is unlimited. So I believe basic law or basically any area of law could be done in the same way. For limitations, um, I think forming a team might be difficult, especially du uh, during the pandemic. So that is why BB and I, we're actually thinking of um, 
designing a software to help students find their own teammates, especially when they cannot meet face to face. So that would be the limit, but we can find a solution. Yeah. Phoebe, you want to add to this? Uh, I guess one limitation that one may anticipate is relating to um, ideas. So most students actually produce videos, but then they actually can achieve more. And this actually requires them to demonstrate their creativity. So law students are somehow confined to a certain aspect of knowledge. And we all think we need to find a way to express legal knowledge in a a very humanly intelligible way. So there may be confinements, but then I think students can actually think out of the box more frequently. And I think there's a way that needs encouragement and practice. I mean, who do you think benefits the most from the, in terms of learning the law? I mean, it must be a good learning experience for the students who produce the videos. Um, absolutely. The students who produce the videos will be the first a uh, group of beneficiaries and then the students watching the videos of course they will be learning something and of course the teacher yeah. because we have never thought about presenting law in such a lively way so i personally learned a lot from the students i mean they're so creative do you know one thing you say that um, you learn a lot from the students and that makes you know sometimes people talk about this um idea of uh, liminal concepts or threshold concepts so things you know things that difficult ideas that have got to be understood and the, the problem is teachers may not know what you know which problems of which concepts are problematic for the students so Alice did you find that this was helpful to, to give you insight into what students found difficult absolutely because I actually had the briefing and also I um, would be having uh, I would be answering their questions during the briefing and so from their questions I get an idea what are the difficult concepts for students and then I could elaborate on those concepts during the normal lectures so actually it is a mutually beneficial activity because I know what they're what they're struggling with so yes I, I learned a lot from the whole process the whole uh, meeting with the students when they were conceiving their presentation Yes. And then a question from Jaspal Kar. Was there any resistance from the students when producing the blogs or working as producers? Um, well, because we make it optional and also they will only have the benefit because they will get the 30 percent of the final grade if only if um, their uh, creative video score a higher mark than the examination. In other words, if they're video turns out to be not so good, then I will simply look at their final exam and disregard the video. So therefore, they have all the incentive, but basically no resistance because it is 100% optional. They can opt not to do this. And um, another thing, I mean, um, you talked about two ideas, two kind of, um, kind of underpinning concepts, student as partners, and students as producers. I think they're, slightly, they're very similar, but slightly different. Uh, but they're both, I think what they're both partly about is in a way, kind of subverting the hierarchy, the teacher-student hierarchy, and breaking that down, mm -hmm. giving, you know, emphasizing student agency. Uh, and did, was that something you felt was happening? You mean whether it is happening in your course, did you feel that students were taking on more of the role of teachers, that, you're, that you really were more like partners? Yes. Than yes. The teacher and... yes, that is our goal, actually, yeah. because uh, the lead team and I, um, three years ago, we actually had a discussion about the role of students in um, learning and teaching. So we thought the students, they're actually capable, more capable than the teachers in designing the learning activity and finding out what are the challenges. And so that is why, absolutely, that is our goal, to give uh, the, the freedom to the students so that they can actually take charge of their own learning. Yes, I think it is happening, at least in my course, and we hope that we can promote this to other teachers and other courses as well. Yes. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alice. Thank you. Um, it was interesting. We had, um, we were very lucky, kind of one of, the, uh, one of the people who was most influential in the, the student's producer idea is this man Mike Neary who was at Warwick and then he moved to Lincoln and he, he gave us a talk about the, 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 the underpinning philosophy and for him it very much is about really transforming the university 
so that it's much more kind of research, you know, so that learning is much more aligned with research and, um, and much more, yeah, really emphasizing much more student agency. Uh, yeah, so really his idea was to subvert the university. Um, yes, and I think it is very interesting and encouraging to see that property law teachers and students are doing very interesting things in different institutions. I, I could see a lot of similarities and possibility of collaboration, actually. But, well, we'll talk, we'll talk about that. Yeah, it's quite it's funny. It's two, two landlord uh, <laughs> teachers who started off. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure there's a lot of big community need, really, in one way or another. You know, a lot, it's an everyday, every, somebody's got some kind of property law problem. We had a, a talk by Doreen Kong um, from Richards Butler, and uh, she was talking about water leakage, the law of water leakage. It was in Cantonese, I don't know actually what she said. But, you know, when I told my colleagues we're going to have a talk about water leakage, which sounds, you think, doesn't sound very exciting, but everybody has had this problem of water coming in from an, up, an upstairs flat, and it causes a big heartache. So lots of legal problems like that, everyday legal problems, but potentially very expensive legal problems. And if we could find a way to allow people to access solutions, that would be great. <laughs>